Good evening and welcome to Reverend Sherry's online metaphysical Bible hangout. This Bible experience is an extension of Understanding Principles for Better Living Church, where Reverend Della Reese Lett is the minister and the founder. Up Church is a Bible-based, New Thought Christian church. If you are in the Los Angeles area, come on and stop by. We would love to see you. Our services are held every Sunday from at 1 o'clock at 600 West Queen Street in Inglewood, California. I am Reverend Sherry James, Assistant Minister of Up Church. So a couple of announcements and then we're going to dive in. I'm really excited about tonight. Uh, first, every Saturday, Reverend Cherie hosts the Spiritual Weight Loss Radio Broadcast. And so I encourage you to tune in at 9 a.m. Pacific at blogtalkradio.com backslash Cherie Speaks. You can also dial in at 347-826-9368. And... I've got a new website coming. Those of you who normally watch the Metaphysical Bible Hangout have probably gone to the site and gotten an error message. That's because I've got something fun and new coming. So thank you for watching on YouTube or Google+. Plus. Um, you'll get a notice soon about the new RevSherry.com rebrand, opening, launching, coming back to you. So this is like RevSherry 2.0. Uh, and not designed by me. This first one was designed by me. This second one was designed by somebody who actually makes websites. So that alone is going to raise the game. Uh, I've got a new course, and I told you guys about it last week, and I'm really excited because I've been working on it all week and you know, just getting everything together for you guys. And this course is called Jumpstart. Wake up the passion that fuels your life purpose. I am so excited. If you have ever taken a teleclass from me before, you will find that this one is like a teleclass on steroids. All the things you love, plus some new things that my team and I have been dreaming up, it's going to be amazing. Enrollment opens August 25th, but those of you that are on my email list are going to get an opportunity next week to register for an early bird special. If you're listening live and you want to join this discussion, you can just click join and the program will bring you in as a live participant. Or if you just want to ask a question, you can enter the question in the Q&A and we've already got some questions ahead of time, so I do see those. I want to shout out Bright, who's in Germany. Thank you for getting up, Bright, to <laughs> bright and early <laughs> to, to watch uh, the broadcast. Um, and also, now this is it, y'all. He came July 10th and it was like it changed the whole game with the Bible hangout. The D Dr. Will Coleman, Bible scholar extraordinaire. Like, <laughs> what doesn't he know? <laughs> he is coming back next Thursday, August 21st. Mark your calendars, tell your friends, send the children to the babysitter, or keep them because they need to know this type of stuff. But get ready because it is time to have some fun, and I'm so excited. So, and he's excited. He knows how much you guys love him, and so I'm just we're just delighted to have him come back and share with us and teach us once again. Uh, this is going to be an exciting time. And finally, if you like this broadcast, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And so you can be notified of other videos that I post besides these classes. Now, this journey is rooted in scripture. And the scripture that guides us is Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So I'm just going to ask that right where you are that you just center yourself and take a deep cleansing breath. And one more time, deep cleansing breath. We just put this class, this conversation in the hands of the one power and the one presence. You know, all of the plans that we have made to pull together the right lesson, the right information to share. But we just put this in your hands now and we just ask that you move through us and inspire us to say the right things to one another so that each of us walks away from this conversation more in tune and attuned to our divine nature. May we leave this space more committed than ever to practice
practice being God in action. I believe every word that I pray is always answered, and so this prayer is no different. I release it and allow it to become so. And so it is. And amen. All right. This has been a fun, a super fun guest series that I have had. And tonight, you guys are in for a treat. I, that's just it. You're in for like the biggest treat ever. So I first met this woman and uh, in San Antonio, and we were at the Panorama of Truth. And she spoke, and you know, you know a true teacher when you hear one. This woman is a true teacher, a true preacher, and she just lit the room up. And so when I knew that I was doing a guest series of uh, of you know folk at the Metaphysical Bible Hangout, I had to reach out to her. So our guest this evening is the Reverend Sadar Corridan Mercer, who is the founding pastor of the Divine of United Divine Church of the Healing Christ. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of her bio, and then we're going to jump right in. She is a licensed United Divine Science minister and practitioner with extensive training in spiritual healing methods and practices. She has a background in Christian science, unity and religious science, science of mind. She is also active in a wedding ministry as well as providing workshops on spiritual principles and practices, meditation and integrating prosperity principles with financial planning. Reverend Corden Mercer earned her master's degree in finance with distinction from Long Island University Graduate School of Business in New York. She is the director of finance at a prominent and leading New York hospital. She is the president of the Divine Science Ministers Association and a former recent member of the International New Thought Alliance Executive Board. Sadar has been a speaker at several INTA congresses, and in 2013, she spoke at the Panorama of Truth, hey, for UFBL in San Antonio, which is where I met her, and she taught a class recently on Emma Curtis Hopkins for the Johnny Coleman Theological Seminary Leadership Academy. She has spoken frequently at the United Palace Cathedral in New York, and she is married to the Reverend Dr. Will Mercer, who co-pastors with her at their church and lives in Harlem, New York. Hey, Sadar! Hello, Reverend Sherry. Yes, Thank hi! You so Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to sit in your light this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to have you here. Let me ask you just a couple of things, uh, just so people know who you are. Um, did you grow up in New Thought? Like, were, How did you come to New Thought and, and sort of kind of walk us along this path of how you became a divine science uh, minister? Okay, well, my, my mother, um, the daughter of an Episcopalian priest, uh, decided to become a Rosicrucian at 16. So she was a metaphysician all of her life. And she married my father, a Catholic, and uh, he then went into metaphysics through the Rosicrucian order. But our parents never told us, here, do this or do that. But we grew up around them um, chanting and being very faithful and believing in this higher power. And so going to, you know, Episcopalian Church, I just was not touched and was not moved. And joined a study group, and it was our study group teacher who introduced me to uh, the Reverend Dr. Christopher Bazemore. And, you know, it said that... Uh, it is the, the teacher who chooses the students. And so he introduced me to the works of, you know, Fillmore, Ernest Holmes, um, you know, Mary Baker Eddy, Emma Curtis Hopkins. And, and from that is when I just completely fell in love. I said, well, you know, this is what, this is for me. It made sense. It made a difference in my life. And so that's how I found my way into New Thought. I, you know, I feel the same way um, it, when I found it. Now, I didn't grow up in it, but I had a mom who was, she may not have called herself New Thought, but she was New Thought in the way that she approached life and just everything. 
And so her boldness and her brazenness really gave me the permission to kind of walk out the door of traditional Christianity and walk into something that really sat well with my soul. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, Let's do this because we wanted to talk about Ruth and we want to talk about unconditional love and I've already teased it <laughs> in the email for everybody so that they know we're going to be talking about love and hopefully we'll be sparking some relationships tonight. So oh, um, I'm going to kind of put this in your hands and say what what drew you to that story? Um, why, what did you want to bring to us about unconditional love? I, you know, for me, the power of love. And in this story, how it talks about the sacredness of the family. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it is. And also, you know, from the Bible standpoint, it's an exquisitely told story. Um, because it's a story a, a, about a woman, a woman of Israel, um, Naomi, and her daughter-in-law, who is absolutely, totally devoted to her, Ruth. And, and Ruth is um, a Moab Moabite. So she's considered by the Jews to be a foreigner. But the way the story unfolds, um, we find that um, it brings about the importance of the love of one person for another person, which is what we see between these two women. And it's just for the sake of love and loving. And there's a purity in it. And so I think it's something that we want to emulate even today in our lives, love for the sake of loving, mm -hmm. you know, no, mm -hmm. no, um, no hidden agendas, no, um, uh, no, I'm going to love because I'm going to get this back, but, you know, totally pure. Right. To just love with love, love without any kind of condition on it, love without yeah. any, love without any need for it to be reciprocated from the person that you're giving it to. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that is powerful. And I think also um, what love attracts as a result. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the importance of the story. At least some of the importance. Because there's much more to it. Right. But that's what attracted me to the story. Right. So now in the beginning of the story, she she starts with, um, she, she, they have left Bethlehem. But her, their husbands, because she's she's one of two daughter-in-laws, and their husbands have gone to war, and then the husbands are killed, and so this is how okay. she ends up in the situation where, right? Right. So, so the, the the story takes us to a time where there was famine, right. and so, you know, Ruth, uh, well, not Ruth, Naomi follows her husband to a new land, to Moab, and, you know, the sons. The husband dies, mm -hmm. and later on, the two sons die. Mm -hmm. And so what we see is she, you know, they face this hardship and they die. But the story takes us already to an aspect at the time where the two people, the, the, the Jews, the you know, the Israelis and the uh, Moabites were at war. They had been at war. Even though they're kingmen, they were at war. But when the people from Moab saw the devastation of drought that was taking place, they opened their hearts. And so people who migrated were allowed to come in. They were helped. They were giving food and water. And this is how Naomi finds herself in that foreign country. And as was the tradition at the time, when your husband dies, you go back to your father's house. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so Naomi then tells her two daughter-in-laws, and my, keep in mind that her sons married two local girls. Right. <laughs> That oh no! Was a case, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that so they married these these two. Well, I want to call them native girls to make the point. 
Right. Um, and so she's going to go back to Bethlehem. But she doesn't want to go back, or at least she thinks she cannot go back with two women who would be considered foreigners. She tells Ruth and her other um, daughter-in-law, I think Oprah is her name. Yes, Orba, Orba right. Mm-hmm. Got me to their home, to their father's house. Right. And the interesting part, we talked about choices, you and I, before you started the broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, so they had a choice. They, each daughter-in-law had a choice. One daughter-in-law chooses to go back home at one point. Right. So different consciousness. Right. Ruth, Ruth totally refuses to. She's completely attached to her mother-in-law, and yes. she does not go back home. She says, I'm going to follow you. And so we hear the famous words that she says, this amazing declaration of love and faithfulness. Yes. What she says to her, you know, don't force me to go back. Don't tell me to go back. Uh, you know, wherever you go, I will go. Right. You know, where you you reside, I will reside with you. Your yes. people should become my people. I mean, this is pretty powerful. Your God, you know, will be my God. Um, mm -hmm. Where you die, I will die. I mean, this is so, this is total love being, being spoken of. And this is what Naomi is, is, is hearing from her daughter-in-law. Yes. And, and she says, you know, you know, you know, I'm going to be buried wherever you're buried. So don't ask me to go back. And so I think that Naomi realizes, uh, no, she's not going to go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so spiritually, you know, we're seeing, um, we're seeing how Naomi, who represents a spiritual things, how she's attracted, you know, she's attracting Ruth. Mm -hmm. And Ruth has a different energy, doesn't she, from the other daughter-in-law right. who went back? Yes. So yeah, the daughter-in-law who goes back has a consciousness that focuses on outer things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, 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 so we, we, you know, the Bible sets it up for us in a way that we cannot ignore. Right. Okay, because those words were so powerful. You know, and I think that when you you begin to get a glimpse of what kind of woman was Naomi, you know, how well did she love and treated her daughter-in-laws that there could be such devotion? Right. How faithful was she in living, you know, God's way, the way she had been raised in, in doing? Right. You see, so so it's it's interesting. It's a very interesting story because it takes us there. And so Naomi, it, you just uh -huh. said something that you just said something that caught my attention, and I had never thought of this. Is that you know consciousness determines form. That for Ruth to pour that unconditional love upon Naomi, Naomi had to have given unconditional love, whether and to what extent it was to Ruth specifically, but Naomi had to have lived unconditional love in order to even draw that experience to her. Because we each exactly create our own worlds by what the seeds that we sow. So yeah, I I agree with yes. you when you say that it's an, it's an exquisitely told story that it's it's love on all sides, and that when yes. you love, yes. good things happen to you. <laughs> I know. Yes. Isn't that a wonderful <laughs> promise to hold on to? It is. it is. When you love, good things happen to you. I'm holding on to that <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um. So now she gets back, so and, and I, I know we want to get to the part where, where you know, the, the real deal, holy feel with Boaz, but I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> okay, so, so we just said that Naomi uh, represents, you know, someone who has that spiritual knowledge, okay? And mm -hmm. then we see... 
Oh, so Dar, we have oh, there you are. of our consciousness. Oh, I you I'm sorry. Did I move? Okay, yeah. Yeah, the the your signal went out just a little bit. Okay. So we said that uh, Orca represents the side of our of our consciousness that is focused on outer things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on what's out there, not doing her inner work. But right. Ruth, on the other hand, um, is is that part of the net with the spiritual, and so that is how the stronger attraction. From Ruth to Naomi happens. So you mm -hmm. give to see that, and, and I think it is uh, it's either Elizabeth Sinclair or Fillmore. I should check my facts. That says that it it is uh, the awakening of the soul that is holding fast to the highest thought. Mm -hmm. so um, that's that what we see might be, in, in yeah. Ruth. What what Fillmore says, yeah, I actually right. have that definition. It says, metaphysically, Ruth is the love of the soul in its natural state or the love mm -hmm. of the natural soul for God and for the things of spirit. Ruth is a type of the beautiful, the pure, and the loving characteristics of the natural man. She was the one and only good that Naomi took with her back to Bethlehem, Judah. In Ruth's words, in Ruth 1, chapter 1, verse 6, 16, is represented human love raised to divine love by its willingness to leave the love of the unreal to follow after the real, to go wherever true love leads, to be steadfast in that love. In other words, to love in the highest and best degree and to acknowledge and worship always the God of love. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, so so we're in agreement there. We're in agreement there. So right. there's an awakening that's taking place. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why she follows and she goes. And so um So, so wait, I'm sorry, you just said you do said something else. I'm sorry, and I want to pick up on this. So you said there's an awakening that takes that takes place. And so if I but, hear you correctly, you're saying that that with love that there is this awakening that love wakes us up yes yes and that's what, okay. what happened to Ruth that's what happened to Ruth you know that she was so attached to Naomi to her mother-in-law that she left God country everything right because she saw a person to demonstrate behavior a consistent behavior in practicing full to the way of God's life. Right. Um, and, and that, you know, it, it, it hit, you know, that note. It just woke her up to, you know, there's good out here. I want right. a piece of that good. I want a piece. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, really. It, it's, 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 so that so when you think about that story and you're thinking from a human level, you know uh, what's going on with the consciousness? Well, that's what's happening mm -hmm. because she had a choice, right? You know, so so that's why you have two daughter-in-laws and they each make a different choice, right? Let me ask yeah. you this because we we we've got a uh, you you're speaking about choice and I feel like this is kind of the appropriate time to bring in this question. I read it to you earlier. Um, this is um, we have a question from coming in from Germany, and the the person writes, "How do I further my unconditional love and spiritual thoughts?" Oh, I should have done the first one, but okay, I'll read them both. How can I further? How do I further my unconditional love and spiritual thoughts with my son who was unborn when his mother departed from me due to her unrighteous disregard for the principle of marriage, meaning her eyes went elsewhere that led her to a secret home. And then the next uh, part of that that he writes, my wife has gone, could not endeavor herself to my value such as encourage, inspire, enhance, nor make me happy. Perhaps by God's grace she flees to a secret woman's home now there with my son. How do I express my unconditional love for both? And there's another part to that. Hang on. 
My son is now one year, one year and two months old. I can only see him two times a month. How do I cement my spiritual thoughts with him in such a situation? It's a lot there. Okay, but that, I would say that um, the question takes me to a place where I am thinking how love really affirming in each one of us that we are good, and he's calling us good. And that means, therefore, that we are not to deny the existence of good and only good in our experience. So uh, that's where the word forgiveness comes in, mm -hmm. because love continually forgives. And so... Uh, in a situation like this, what is, is in the blood? And the mother is what? The channel, the human channel through which the child came through. Right. And that may have been her only purpose. So that's right. why forgiveness, forgiveness of ourselves first, and then of everyone around the situation. You have to be willing to let go of that pain, the hurt, in order to let the love come through. Right. And that, right. to me, is how we start. Because love is everywhere present. Right? Love yes. is all powerful. Love, love meets all of our needs. Love knows everything. Right. So why wouldn't we use that as our cornerstone? Right. And that will lead, I mean, this is what the story of Ruth is teaching us. Mm -hmm. How when you practice love, and you and I spoke about that, mm -hmm. you're practicing mm -hmm. God in action. Right. And that leads you, therefore, to good things. That's what the story is showing us. And it right. doesn't matter what, what is the actual um, circumstance or condition it will take us back to that space of love. Right. And how we practice. Right. You just touched I hope on that. Something. Has helped. Yes, I do too. And uh, Bright, let us know if we um, if we answer that question for you. If you if you have a follow up question. But um, and your video, just so you know, Sadara is going out just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of repeat what you said and, and let me know if I missed anything. But that there is an aspect of love that is forgiveness. That that allows each person to make the choices that they make. That we don't control yes. people, and and that as much as as we may want someone to honor the words that they say, at the end of the day, they still have a free choice to not honor those words. And the best that we can do is to release them quickly, so that we are free to love again. Because as long as that hurt is there, that it sits in the space where true love, a pure love, can can come into. Yeah. So, um, but you said something that was key, which is that her only purpose, meaning this, speaking of the wife, and we don't know this, but but you know, when but her her only purpose may have been just to bring that son into the world, and not necessarily to be a life partner. But just to get, just to just to produce a son. Yeah. You you you. I, I'm not hearing what you just said, but I. Okay. You said something after produce a son. You, no no no. That was it. I was saying that that may have been her only purpose. That that I hadn't considered that. That that may have been her only purpose was simply to get to be the vehicle Why? through which this little boy comes comes into expression. Right. Hmm. Right. And so loving that little boy, um, whether once a week, twice a week, whenever, and, and, and that will change with time. There will be more time to love because you love all the time. Right. You know, you love all the time. I mean, and, and love is there for us to use. Right. Okay, and we're supposed to use it, and we're supposed to share it, and when we do, we glorify God. Right. 
you know, something else too, you know, that, that, that it, again, because we were talking about this before, that, you know, Naomi, um, Ruth could attract a Boaz because she had sown a, the seeds of love in her consciousness through loving Naomi. And I think that we have such fear about loving where we are yeah. because we think that it's going to keep us where we are. As if the energy intelligence that we name God, but we can call it whatever, but the energy intelligence that we call God knows how to satisfy us. It knows how to how to give to us. And so we can lose being fearful of loving where we are because if we will just love where we are purely with that the purity that she loved uh, Naomi, that it will bring to us a, an experience that matches that level of love. That you know. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. life is lived from the Ruth inside out. Love every time. Say one more time. I didn't hear the last thing that I you said, said. And what we see is Ruth. I said that Ruth chooses love each time. Yes. You know, so she chose love when she told Naomi, I'm going to follow you, I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, if we follow the story, you know, they, they return to Bethlehem, and again, she chooses love when she says, you know, what we have to eat, I'm going to go find the food. Right. You know, again, she's taking care of her mother-in-law, and she goes. Yes. So, yes. again, love without fear. She didn't know where she was going. Right. But, as you said before, you know, good things happen. So yes. we see the hand of God creating this opportunity for her, for her to go, for Ruth to go, that just to belong to, you know, Boaz. Right. Isn't that incredible? Yes. Just happened yes. to go there. Yes, just and happened. She asked if she could <laughs> just collect wheat and grain, you know, behind the harvester. Yeah. And, um, you know, the overseer watches her and sees that, she, that she's not trying to pick up anybody. She's not right. socializing. She's just working, collecting her grain. And she, her conduct was appropriate. Yes. And he notices that. Yes. So when, when Boaz comes back and says, well, you know, who's this new person? Because he notices her right away. Yes. Now, he could have noticed other people. The Bible doesn't tell us what's going on there. Mm -hmm. But in our time, wouldn't you imagine if there are many women working, you know, also there? They might have, you know, noticed he was a powerful man. Right. Right? He had right. a field. It wasn't common for most people to have land and to have people working for them. Yes. No, you're right. Yes, well, it's not even that. I mean, we see that with, uh, you know, people in any kind of leadership position where, and I'm speaking in this instance, men that are in powerful positions, and there is a group of women that will literally make themselves available. And they will let him know exactly. that they are available. And I am sure there were some women in the field <laughs> that, that were letting go and no, baby. <laughs> I'm here. Hey. <laughs> I'm here. So yes. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right. he noticed but he notices her. Yeah. And he but that says something her. about him too. Because you can only see that which you are. So yeah. though he was this powerful man, he was all he had to have a level of purity that matched the level of purity in Ruth. This was not just a luck of the draw. Well, it, it, and he did, but remember that he's told that she's the woman who came back with Naomi from Moab. Yes. So his interest has been has been picked now. Because he now knows, because he, he happens to be, unbeknownst to Ruth, he's a relative right. of Naomi. Right, 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 yes, and yes. So now everyone knows the story, because this this foreigner who comes back to... to, to this, 
that is something to be admired, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so Ruth demonstrate a quality that you have that kind of an interest. Right. I forgot about that detail in the story. And, and yes, you know, you're right. What I really liked is the fact that Boaz, you know, speaks to her. Mm -hmm. And he gives her advice. He says, you know, you can go ahead and glean in this field. Do not right. go to another field. Right. And he says, and, and follow the women here. Mm -hmm. And then he tells her that he's given um, instructions that none of the men bother her. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you want to drink, you know, go ahead. So here he is showing us, here's, he, here we see men as the caring protector and provider. Yes. yes. So the story even has that in it. Yes. I love that. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, Br uh, Bright, who's in Germany, uh, wrote back. Let me give you what he said because I asked it for feedback. He said, I am thankful to you both for adding to my knowledge toward the issue of my son and his mother. As I understood, you have acknowledged me that I should use the forgiveness tool to let bygones be bygones for the sake of love. Okay. I don't know if I oh, if I, I, did. <laughs> I yes forgiveness but I think I want to hit on that bygones be bygones because I want to touch and mainly this is just because I just you know came out of teaching Reverend Mary's forgiveness class but forgiveness is so much more than saying I let you off the hook that person is already off the hook as long as that stuff is active in you you're the only person on the hook as long as you are walking around yeah. with the hurt and the anger and the betrayal and all, as long as all of that is inside of you it's you that's on the hook it's not the other so person so the you, go ahead go, I'm sorry so that, that's why you have to be willing. I said that's why it's important to be willing to give something up in order to replace it with that love so you're right so we start with self fitness that's what you're saying Yes, Very you have, and 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 it's also forgiving yourself for. Remember, like attracts like. It's forgiving yourself for the for the choice. If you could have seen where that relationship was going, you wouldn't. You know, you didn't have the prophetic eye to say, "No, I don't want to go down that road." So there was something beautiful there for you to learn, for you to get from that experience. And the, the forgiveness is not making her behavior okay. The forgiveness is saying a choice was made and I'm not going to carry the anger. I'm not going to carry the hurt. I'm not going to carry the betrayal. I'm going to sit this stuff down because I want to be available for true love. I want to be available for that woman who will love me at the deepest levels of my soul. That's what you're saying. Right. Uh, ja wrote, and I got another question or, or comment from Ja uh, uh, Sadar. He said, based on the description of the situation, this is, we're going back to Naomi, excuse me, Ruth and Boaz. He said, based on the description of the situation regarding the gathering on the field, it's as if the prayer of protection is being lived out. And specifically, the light of God surrounded, surrounds us, demonstrated by the radiance of Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Right, because and, and yes, because Boaz um says to Ruth at some point, uh when he's speaking to her, he says, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. Because he's aware that um that she came back with her mother in law since she didn't have her husband, she didn't have someone to take care of her. She right. brought her back home. Right. And so Boaz is already invoking God. Yes. You know, may, may you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Yes. This, this is powerful. It is. It's fire. This is really powerful. 
And, mm -hmm. and, and again, again, love is protection. Yes. Love is also protection. Yes. So we are still in the theme of love. I think people you don't know? believe that love protects. I think that people think love is weak because they talk about everybody plays the fool and they, you know, the people who were a, a fool for love or, um, you know, that love is, is, is weak and what you want to be is strong and powerful. Um, but, so can you talk a little bit more about, like, how is it that love is protective? Well, love is the perfect power within us. Love, um, and, and that is when we are practicing the action of God, the action of love through us, okay? What we see is that, and we have the example in Jesus the Christ, okay? Although he was crucified, the man was crucified, Okay, but the Christ lives on, indestructible, cannot be destroyed, and is the same Christ that is in within each one of us. So when we tap into that energy, we have the same power that it holds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the power we have within us. Mm -hmm. But again, we have to choose love. Right. Because the opposite would be choosing what? Fear. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, 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 I think that, and I think that if we truly are practicing love, then we begin to have a consciousness that love heals everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's not a thing that love will not you know, um, overcome mm -hmm. when we let love do its perfect work within us. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about love properly understood. Um, and when it is properly understood, it is the magic key to the mm -hmm. kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. But we mm -hmm. have to get our conscience, we have to build our muscle to love muscle to get us to that consciousness. Okay. That understanding. And how and so how do I build the love muscle? And we again, and this is when we go back to the to the basics. You know, to, to going back to the affirmation and, and to seeing good. Right. Everywhere and in everyone, that good is always present. This is when we have to go back to those basics and do that. Okay, you know? so then if we were talking about the young man that's in Germany now, we would say that he has to see good in his ex-wife. He has to see good in that situation. Is that what we're saying? Yes, yes. We always, because if you don't look for the good, that means that there is something in you that accepts the absence of good. Right. And that's sometimes we call that separation. Right. Right? Right. So, right. so, when, so when, I, when I'm looking at a situation and I think that it's bad, and all I can see is that it's bad all around, that essentially I have, in, within my own heart, I have accepted the absence of good. And... And so we have to rally our back on that page of good and to see that good simply is. God is, love is, life is. You right. are, I am. Right. Good is. You know, and that's the rallying we have to do. Right, right. So if, if we were to give him some affirmations, some things that he could work with to start to, to, to strengthen that love muscle within him, um, what anything that comes to mind? The first thing that came to mind when I thought when I was thinking of it is that I am love. Um, to right. just to just affirm that I am love. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can hear you, but but 
Yeah. The, because I think that's a very strong, because you put I am in front of it, that has a creative power. Yes. And if you work with that affirmation, you will convince yourself that, you know, that you are love. Yes. And that's what it is. It's about convincing ourselves, and as Emma Curtis Hopkins says, that there's good for you and you already have it. Yes. Okay, so if you are love, <laughs> you're only going to attract love. But uh -huh. are you willing to accept that? Yes. You know, so if I'm loving, I'm lovable, okay, everyone loves me, then all of a sudden we begin to see people with those eyes and believing that when they look at us, that they only see love. When they listen to us, they only hear love. Right. See, be, so that's, be love in action. Yes. Be Practice love in action. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm yeah, and, and that's and how that, we build that consciousness of love. Right, right. So I hope that helps you, uh, Bright. Thank you so much. Bright is writing in from Germany, and I, I'm so grateful because he got up early this morning, <laughs> early his morning, because it's nighttime okay. here. <laughs> he got up early his morning to uh, to to tune in. So very thankful for that. Uh, he writes. He says, uh, Reverend Sherry, thank you for clarifying that bygone issue. I was the one hurt, and I agree with your explanation. Thank you, Bright. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Very much appreciate that. Um, so now, something you said when we were doing, you know, I do a pre-interview with all of my guests just to kind of, you know, say these are the things we're going to talk about. And I want to get to the laying at the feet. I just want to bypass <laughs> everything else. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to get to the laying at the feet. Oh, can, can we and, deal with that? <laughs> yes. So, so uh, let me set it up for you, right? The way the Bible tells the story. Um, so now Ruth goes back home and Naomi is asking her, well, how did the day go? What happened? She tells her everything. And then she says, well, I was, uh, you know, collecting wheat and, and grains. This field and the owner's name is Boaz. And Naomi is overjoyed because she recognizes him as a male relative. Okay? Mm -hmm. And again, we said earlier that when your husband dies, you go back home or, or you go to the nearest uh, or closest male relative to take care of you. So Naomi now... Um, realizes, oh, he is a wealthy relative at that, okay? And so he knows the tradition of the time, which is that he has, or he's going to take care of us. So Naomi is very happy. But Naomi has a plan. So her plan is she tells Ruth, we have to find your husband. And knowing the tradition of the time, she begins to tell Ruth what to do. So she tells her that at, at the end of the, uh, the harvest, you know, usually the owner he stays or, or sleeps in the barn where, you know, his grains and stuff are. So he says, you're going to go there. Don't let anyone see you. Because she realizes that there has to be an opportunity for Ruth to speak to Boaz. And back then, uh, there was no courtship. Right. There was no, no discussion or, you know, a man was not allowed to speak to. The opportunity to speak was simply not there. But Naomi tells Ruth, you're going to go there and you are going to uncover his feet and lay at his feet. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, uncover his feet is because, you know, um, that, has, that has a meaning. Um, but I think it is Dr. Rocco Erico who says that we shouldn't take it to mean that because in the Aramaic Bible it's just said to lay at his feet. Okay, which is, a, which is a stronger meaning because there was nothing that was impure that was going on. There was nothing intimate. 
God. But what he did was to provide an opportunity for Boaz to say, well, who's there? And uh -huh. she said, your servant, Ruth. And, and then she lets him know that she is also a widow. Uh -huh. You see? Now, it's interesting because she could have said, Ruth could have said to Naomi, what do you mean, go lay at his feet? Uh -huh. But she didn't do that. She so trusted this person that she herself did not get in the way of her own good. Yes. She basically said, I'll do whatever you say. She right. trusted that Naomi was going to guide her and tell her how to do it and to do, do it well. Do yeah. it in a honorable way. Right. But get her point across. You know, I too, I'm a widow. So I'm available. Okay. Yes. And being that she was so honorable, it meant that it's for marriage, not to play with. Right. That was the message <laughs> that Boaz received. Right. You know, and and so we, we, we see how the story takes a different turn. Because before Naomi tells her about the plan we can only imagine that Ruth kept going back to the same field, Boaz observed her, and saw that her conduct was also, you know, appropriate, you know? Right, Because right. he says to her, you could have looked at a younger man. Right. You didn't. Right. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. Worthy. You know, and this to me is, you know, is important because um, sleeping at the feet implies, you know, that I, I'm in need of something, mm -hmm. okay? But mm -hmm. also this act um, lets Boaz know if you are a distant relative, of, therefore of my husband also, that, you know, well, I, I am here. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you, you are now my, uh, and I think they use the term uh, redeemer, um, you know, so it was the relative who's going to take care of her. Mm -hmm. But Boaz, mm -hmm. being the honorable man that he was, he said, but someone else, there's someone else who's closer than I am, which was another relative. Mm -hmm. so apparently, uh, Naomi had sold her property, so the inheritance of her son, and at those times, that meant that Ruth, as the, the daughter-in-law, right. would go along with the property. Right. Okay? So so that was pretty significant that she went and, um, you know, allowed herself to have the opportunity to speak with him by, you know, keeping... Um, or laying at his feet. Yeah. So how, the question is, how many of us are willing <laughs> to take an action? <laughs> so back then he was sleeping at the feet, right? Right. So today, what is it? Today, what is it? Is it an email? Is it a phone call? What is it today? Right, right. But you got to put yourself out there if you want the love. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> you know? Is that what we're saying? Get out of the way of your good. Get out of the way, you're good. I, there's a there's a, a cartoon I had that, that says, excuse me, could you please push me out of my own way? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay. What is the so equivalent the today? Say, uh, say it again. I'm sorry I cut you off. I said, do you see the importance of that, of being able yes. to say, but I'm going to take an action. What yes. am I willing to do? Because whatever I'm doing, if it's not working for me, Am I willing to do something that's different? Right. If I'm not getting results from what I'm doing, am I willing to do something different? Or am I willing? To, am I so stuck in where I am that I'm going to just hold on <laughs> to the way things are, even though they're not the way that I want them to be? Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to me, that is so, you know, it's so powerful. 
Oh, this there's a question. Hang on, that this is a very very good question. Um, this is from Germany. He says, as Naomi was a noble woman by character and deed, how do we, meaning men, go about to get a Naomi type of wife? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a Boaz, baby. <laughs> Uh, that's right. That's right. No, but, but <laughs> <laughs> that's an awesome question. That, Thank you, Bray. I think that um, you know, my husband would remind me that every that that most men men typically uh, want to be able, um, or at least a desire to care for, mm -hmm. you know, and to protect. Mm -hmm. You know, my husband will remind me of that. You know, um, and in fact, he, 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 he did when we met. Um, and so that's how you go about it, because you will identify, um, you know, like you attract that same love that you're willing to put out and give. Right. You know, and your eyes begin to see that. And, and that's what is going to come back to you. Right. That's how you attract. So you you've got to be the unconditional love that you want from somebody else. You got to practice it. All right. You got to practice it. That's how. Ja says, Reverend. You know, open your yes, heart. Yes. Open your heart. Yes. Ja says, Reverend Sadar also seemed to point out Ruth's demeanor in her asking when she put out that Ruth made it clear that she presented herself available as a wife and for no other purpose. Yeah. And, and then he, he followed up with the question, and I love this question, how often am I that clear cut in asking the divine? Where it is like, this is, this is the purpose, this is, I'm, I'm only here to be a wife. I'm not here <laughs> to be your buddy. Well, your, yeah, friend, because your friend would have benefited. <laughs> you know, and, and I think it's in our consciousness and our mindset. You know, what is it that we want? Mm -hmm. You know, and in, in our times, you're going to have men who are going to say, well, you know, there, and, and I remember my brothers used to say that years ago, that there are some sisters or some women that, um, you know, oh, she's wife material and this one is not. And I used to say, well, what do you mean by that? Right. What does that mean? And later on, I understood as I got older that what, what they meant is that, well, you know, I might want to play with this person, but the person I'm choosing to be my partner partner for life, well, I, I, I want to honor, I want to respect, and I want to, you know, so we can use all the words that we hear people say in their wedding vows and whatever you have, but essentially, the heart is attracting that person, so two hearts have to be open, okay, for it to work, and that's what we see. We see through observing that Boaz and, and Roofs, their hearts are open because now there's a love that is being established between them. Yeah. You know, because Boaz wastes no time. He goes to the town gate. They didn't have yeah. halls at the time. They didn't have, you know, meeting rooms or conference rooms. So he goes there where he knew the elders will be and where he would see this other relative. And he says to him, you know, are you aware that, you know, you, you are now the, the, um, the relative who is to be responsible for this person, Ruth, because you have the land. And yeah. when this person said, well, I don't want that responsibility that might cause me problem, then Boaz stepped up and said, well, I'm going to take that responsibility. So let it be seen to everyone that I'm purchasing the land with the purchase. He announces it immediately with the yeah. purchase of this land I can now make Ruth my wife. Yes. There was no hesitation on his part. Yes. You see, so that's how much the love had, the love connection had, you know, had already been working that he recognized it. So there was no game playing. It, it seemed to be, I mean, the Bible doesn't go into all these details, but the impression that you have is, is again, this purity, this, you know, you know, I want to love this person and I want to do good for them because look at the good they've done. So right. that's the only thing that can be returned to them is more good. Right, right. Trust the process. What you give yeah. will come back. 
Um, so, Dara, we are at 9 o'clock, or midnight your time. Oh. <laughs> I know, cool. where did the time go? We didn't get to talk, we didn't get to talk about the kid. Okay. No I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me, where can, uh, where can people find you? Um, I am at, well, my email is uh, revsidar at gmail.com. Right, and Sadar and is S-E-D-A-R-E. -E. Yes. Yes. <laughs> my my, uh, my cell phone is 646-306-2424, uh, and if you come to Harlem at the United Divine Freedom Church of the Healing Christ, uh, uh, we, we have a Sunday service at 1130, so you can find me there as well. And we, um, and I guess. Uh, and is there a we, is there a website now. for your church? A so website for your oh, church? Yes, there there is. It's uh, United Divine Freedom uh, Church at um, what's my website? That dot com or dot net? Okay. Dot org and dot com. Okay. We have both. Okay, great. Maybe correct. Great, great. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming to the Bible Hangout. Yay! Thank you so much. Yes. This was wonderful. And thank you, everybody, who watched on YouTube. My website will be up next week, so you'll be able to watch again back at RevSherry.com. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Ja, Alita, Ray, so glad to have you. Bright, uh, you stayed awake, my friend. Or you got up. You got up. <laughs> you got up so so happy that you you got up early in Germany there. Very much appreciate that. But I just bless you all, and I release you in the love and the light of the Christ, and I affirm that the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, and the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and so it is. Have a great, great, great um the, uh, evening and just thank you everybody take care <laughs>